Alrighty, so, like the title says, this video is going to be about pretty much how to transition quicker when you're in a, in a tandem. So, um, a lot of people seem to be having this issue where you're tandeming with somebody and when you go and transition, the, the person in front of you is extremely quick, right? Like they flick their car to the opposite direction really fast and here you are with this really slow, sluggish transition right and it can really screw up a lot of people and make you less aggressive and less competitive so this video is for you guys that want to try and fix that issue to make you a little bit more quicker so the first thing you want to look at okay because there's a few things that could be messing up uh, your um, your transitions and that is your all of your uh, front dampers your, re your fast rebounds and all of this stuff right here okay these are very very important settings because if you screw these up your car will not turn and you will literally drift straight into a wall every time. I see this all the time. Guys that are running on East Toge on the very first corner, people always smash into that first corner because they can't turn. They've got too much power and they're not used to the 180 life. So, first thing you would probably want to do is you want to get those front springs and those rear springs under 100. Right? You don't need this cranked up to 100, uh, 150 or anything like that. Keep them low. That's more realistic and they are way more responsive. Next thing, get your ground or get your car off the ground. If you got your car like this, right, it's, it's on its butt. It's it's got no room, which is just ridiculous. So you need your suspension to be somewhat high because if they're not, then all of these settings are completely useless because your car cannot compress, it cannot rebound, and all that good stuff. So you need to make sure that this is set to a reasonable height. Now, if you're interested in this car's um, build obviously you're gonna see it on the screen But I've got a whole nother video talking about this car and showing you actually how it handles This is one of my favorite cars. It absolutely bangs on doors. So it's insane So if you're interested the videos on my channel go check it out if you want uh, But the next thing you want to check out is the front toe now. I like to run 44 front toe, so For me my car is already extremely snappy, so I don't have to actually worry about my car not transitioning super fast I'm actually the opposite. My cars trans uh, switch too quick, so it gets it's so fast that I I find myself losing control of the car. So now I'm at a position where I have to actually slow the transitioning down when I switch. Uh, but this one right here is very very good. If you've got this cranked all the way up to here, your car will you can literally push your analog stick to the left so it starts drifting in a circle, and then you can just full gas it and it will just keep doing a circle okay if you have this cranked up you will hold angles like crazy and it is really really hard to spin out like that so i like to have this sitting around about 47 um, for me personally with this car it makes it so it's it's not so twitchy not so responsive but also it's just responsive enough that i can get on the inside of doors when i trans uh, when i switch now uh, the second thing is your anchorman angle now if you have your Anchorman angle set to zero, people think that if you have it set to zero, that means that you're OP as, you're really good, you're real skillful. It's actually completely wrong. If you have it set to zero, you can hold angles which are so unrealistic, it's not funny. And you can normally spot someone because uh, that, that runs really low Anchorman because they are constantly scrubbing the front tires. You'll see a, a skid mark from the front tires when they're drifting because that angle, unfortunately, is just not realistic. Uh, that's why the car is normally extremely slow. Yes, they can hold huge angle, but they don't go anywhere the majority of the time. They're extremely slow, and having a very, very low Anchorman angle will make your switching very, very sluggish. So this is the key one right here. Now, if you put it at 100, your car will be really responsive, okay? This thing will be a bullet. It will. It'll be a rocket ship, but it also makes the car extremely... Uh, extremely uncontrollable if you're not used to running 100 Ackerman angle. The car will spin. Unlike if you run zero, the car will n literally never spin, right? You can throw this in max speed into a corner and try and do a reverse entry. The car will not spin at all, all right? It will not spin at all to save your life. But if you even slightly get out of angle with this one, it will spin. It'll pop a 180 on you. If you're not careful, it'll pop a 360 or a 720. It's it's a whole different ball game. So what I like to do, I like to go somewhere in the middle between 40 and 70. All depends on the car, the size of the car, and what you're going for. So <clears throat> for me, 
70 is really really good for my larger cars which are a little bit more sluggish and have a little bit more weight to them so i like to go with around about 70. and with my smaller cars like this one i run about 45. so it's just enough to um keep me really fast when i switch but also at the same time i don't scrub tires 24 7. only when i'm doing crazy angle when i'm trying to slow down that's when the tires will scrub but unfortunately when i run 100s for cars like these um it's just a little bit too twitchy and it makes my uh, drifting not clean enough and if you're trying to do really clean drifts like you see on youtube um, which is what i do as well i try to keep my drifting as clean as possible um it, it just makes it that much harder so i like to run like i said between 40 and 70 to be competitive if you want to do tricks i go from 70 to 100 if you want to just throw an angle to do points or something then obviously you go 40 and below so um that's literally the the biggest issue right there now if that has not solved your issue then you've got a whole another problem to, to work with right there's something really bad going on either your wheel track at the front is too far out which can cause the, the wheels to um transition a little bit slower which can be a bit of an issue you might have your front air pressure or your rear air pressure too high or it could be something as simple as you have too much power your setup is not good enough you have too much power what i like to do is when i run high horsepower i run about 800 to 750 with most of my cars um, especially the medium sized ones when you run too much power the car cannot flick directions quick enough right because it's constantly skidding insanely fast so if you're running heaps of power either you can lower the horsepower what i do is i like to lower the torque uh, just a bit so the car has a bit more go to it all right so it feels slower with my gear ratio too i have it at 292 for its final drive the car is it feels sluggish but once you get going into second gear or even first gear on the limiter the thing is a rocket ship and that's exactly what you want so um that's pretty much it that should have solved your, your issues if you're if you're still having issues let me know and uh send me your tune set up and i'll have a look at it and uh, see if i can help you out but if i've if i've you know helped in any way make sure you guys subscribe do all that good stuff but with that said catch you guys in the next one